Listen to this quick clip about Palantir Technologies. Uh, what I really think is you take my uh, you take my Palantir and you take whatever anyone says about it. Let's talk about it in a year. Let's, let's talk about it in two years. I uh, and um, I'm very happy. I actually love when people attack us because it's like great. Okay, well we'll show you our cards over the next couple of years. What's going to happen in two years? A lot of the questions that are being asked, like how does how does AI move from being either a danger or a trinket, are going to move to oh, these five companies, these 10 companies in the sector implemented large language models, algorithms, and did it in a way that created trust, and they won the whole market. I love this clip. It's a little bit older from Alex Karp, the CEO of Palantir, basically highlighting and trying to explain to the doubters and to the criticizers that he embraces them. And this keeps a challenging atmosphere for this new disruptive technology we call artificial intelligence. And Palantir has continued to defeat the doubters and to basically keep the bears running out of questions because they keep smashing their earnings reports. They're working and they became profitable within the last few quarters. They now have that fourth quarter of gap profitability, have the inclusion now for the S&P 500 meeting that criteria and are really paving the way and getting into the private sector. Now, with that, we have another breaking news for PLTR that they have collaborated with a major college that is going to be working on healthcare databases. If you're new to the channel, if you're a returning viewer, hit that like button, subscribe for daily um, videos. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm collecting all the data and dispatching it to you. Now, with that being said, what we do have for Palantir, before we get too far into the price and what we could be seeing in terms of fluctuations today, we have a lot of inter interesting, I want to say, volatilities and variables within the market, is that Palantir Technologies, they collaborated here and they revolutionize with the actual healthcare system working with the University of Colorado Medical Campus. And what they are working on and this venture that they're working on together is an integral part of a visionary at constructing one of the most extensive and diverse health databases in the annals of history. Now, the NIH, the National um, Institute of Health has provided a grant of 30 million to bolster this actual undertaking. So there is funding behind it. And what this collaboration, what they're working on, this will serve as a catalyst for groundbreaking research and transformative discoveries in the realm of healthcare in medicine. And what they are working is poising to make significant strides in un unraveling the mysteries of human health and ushering in a new era of medical breakthroughs. So Palantir Technologies is really working to get involved to help improve not just society, but getting involved into in diversifying with its private clients and getting into the healthcare sector, which I think is great because as they can help reform and improve the actual databases behind healthcare, this can actually improve the care that is provided to the patients. Now, Palantir Technologies we see is sitting at 1668. Trading is going to be interesting today considering that we had that December inflation report that came in a little bit higher than the Wall Street analysts had expected at 3.4% percent compared to the expected 3.2 percent. What we saw from the global markets was basically straight consolidation, actually doing better than I thought myself. I thought we were going to see a little more of a pullback considering we've had a large run-up and since last November and December after the Fed said that they were going to stop hiking interest rates. Now there's uncertainty with that statement that could there possibly be a delay if inflation rates are still high. However, Palantir does a decent job being more of a speculative and a volatile asset holds at the 16s. And as we see here, Palantir is starting to build support at the 16s, which is great to see because it has not had a lot of trading history within this zone between the 16s and the 17s. And if Palantir has a bullish day, it could reassume some support at the 17s, as we see here, has triggered many reversals. And if we quickly come over here to the options, what we do see is an immense amount of call option volatility at that $17 strike price for end of day expirations. That's today, 26,000 that we've seen and also continuing on into the next week, we see lots of call volume even at the $20 strike price. So we see investors that are taking a bullish bet of confidence that Palantir will continue to grow in valuation in the near future. Now, 
continuing on with what we've seen, and I think that Palantir is going to have as a major variable in terms of a catalyst for success in 2024, is going to be this involvement with the actual private sector, the commercial revenue and commercial customers. And as we've seen this with lots of collaborations in just the recent few months, remember last Q3 quarter presentation, Palantir presented with a 33% year-over-year growth in U.S. customer commercial revenue, and also in terms of a 37% year-over-year commercial customer count. Now, why this is important is because Palantir typically has relied on those governmental contracts, which Alex Karp has even said himself, the revenue can be lumpy with those, and those can cause, cause large fluctuations in their actual earnings and with their projections. With the growth with their customer accounts and in the commercial revenue, you can see that their new AIP software is starting to fully roll out into this new sector. And with that, Palantir is continuing to have growth on both of these avenues. And next quarter earnings is going to be February 13th. Earnings per share is predicted to be at eight cents. And what we've seen is a new indicator that is very bullish and the fact that there have been 16 earnings per share revisions in the last 90 days. This was just at nine. So the fact that there's 16 earnings per share revisions shows that Wall Street is continuing to set Palantir at a higher standard. And they've done this with the previous few quarters and Palantir has continued to beat Wall Street expectations. And now with what we've seen with the fourth quarter of gap profitability, you now have, of course, that inclusion into the S&P 500, which could be another great bullish catalyst for Palantir in 2024. Now, the question is, when is that going to happen? Happen, nobody knows. We know that they've met the criteria, but the people that actually manage the S&P 500 have these meetings and they decide which stocks come in. And if stocks come in, there needs to be stocks that go out. So Palantir could be included. We don't know if it happens. If it does, historically, we've seen about a 5% gain evaluation just due to all the ETFs, all the different funds that track the S&P 500. There's a lot of just general buying pressure that comes across the board. So even though Palantir has kind of had a modest revenue growth, and this is one of the biggest criticism, is, is its decelerating uh, revenue growth rate, we see the actual maturity of the company that is growing. And with that, they recorded, remember, $2.1 billion in revenue over the last 12 months, with the revenue increasing 17% year over year. With that, they should rise up to $2.7 billion in 2024, up 20% from the last year. Now, Palantir does have a criticism that we must acknowledge, and it does have, this is factual information, and that is a high valuation, and that Palantir, Molly Fool says here, is not perfect for every investor, especially with those investors that are looking for value-oriented stocks. Palantir has a very high valuation right now, just specifically looking according to Seeking Alpha right here, at the price to earning on gap of 79.95, basically 80, which means that lots of investors are paying a premium for the actual price on Palantir shares right now because they think it'll grow in valuation and that the company will grow into its valuation over time. And with these tech stocks, we typically do see them being overvalued. Look at some of the biggest tech stocks that are out there. Palantir, however, is largely above its media sector, which does come with some uncertain uncertainty that if there were any types of big bearish or large revenue misses, we could generally see a decent pullback in Palantir. Where that zone would be specifically, we don't know for sure. But where Palantir typically has liked to trade in the past, it did for a good amount of 2023, is between the 13s and the 16s. So those could be fallback points for Palantir as it's trying to reassume, like I said, that support level at the 17s right now. But however, if Palantir is able to assume that support, we see the option volatility at that $20 strike price. That is that next incremental tier of resistance in that next milestone that Palantir needs to cross again because it recently did last year when it set that last year, 52 week year to day high at 2185. If Palantir is able to break through that resistance and hold above that level, then I think we could see Palantir getting into the mid 20s, possibly even testing the 30s if we see a continuation 
of success and the rollout of AIP being ex exponential, not just kind of a continued steady growth, but if we see an exponential growth in the customer count on the commercial side of things, on the commercial revenue, on the commercial customer count, we're seeing them really diversify and grow into the private sector, which I think is one of the biggest catalysts for Palantir in 2024. I'll catch you guys later. Have a great weekend. Peace out.